Paul Barron. This is TechPath. Let's dive into Solana because I think a lot of people look at Solana as a unique alternative to Ethereum. And we do these market movers where we pull together data, news items, analysis from time to time, pack it up in a nice little package for you, hopefully give you guys something that's perfect for your research in doing your own crypto investing and your own program uh, development of how you want to build your knowledge around technology. As a reminder, this is not investment advice. It's always an educational and research package that's based on our own findings and options. We're not financial advisors and highly recommend you do your own research and your own due diligence on any private or public investment. All right, so let's jump into, I want to go to the first news article here from Daily Hodl. Basically, headlines, pretty straightforward. Can Binance Smart Chain and Solana overtake Ethereum? Crypto heavyweights analyze the DeFi future. I can't imagine that you could say that Solana could overtake Ethereum. But if you really look at where this is going, there's some interesting uh, points here that they make. And let's talk, talk about it. In a new episode of the Unchained podcast, Kane Warwick, founder of Derivatives Liquidity Protocol Synthetics, you guys know this one, uh, and Kyle Samani, managing partner over at crypto-focused investment firm Multicoin Capital, says that both BSC and Solana likely pose a significant threat to Ethereum. Now, Warwick says that basically Binance Smart Chain is drawing users to find Ethereum transactions cost prohibitive, probably pulling some of the liquidity away, but I think that liquidity right now is priced out realistically. They were kind of talking about the fact that this solution that Solana and also Binance are doing is a very unique application of how it potentially really could ramp up in the coming months, especially if there is any kind of slowdown in development of ETH2. So that's kind of what I'm leading to is, is Solana, and, and you know, I've been, as you guys know, if you follow this channel, I'm a big user of and love uh, Solana. If you're trying to get it, it's over on, on uh, Binance USA. If you're in the US, uh, of course, make sure and do that. That's the best thing. But this is one of those things that I think as we look at coins like Solana and their technology is they've kind of answered this one big problem that Ethereum poses in terms of gas fees, but also just the technology and its ability to be able to scale, which is where ETH2 really kind of comes into play. Some people believe that the higher probability than others that you can't know a degree of certainty, how does this application actually function on Ethereum at some level of scale in the next 24 months? It just isn't possible to know. They're talking about this on the podcast. If you've not listened to this podcast, it's the Unchained podcast. I like it. I get a lot from it. Usually she has some great um, people on the show. But I really like the fact that they really dive in, usually going a different direction than some of the other media. And just to be fair, I want to show a comparison because they are essentially very bullish on Solana. And if you look at this piece right here, uh, basically their position is Solana price prediction, more struggles. This is just here recently, June 1st. Uh, more struggles ahead before recovery. So you can kind of see where they're going. Solana still derives a lot of its price action from market sentiment. Totally agree with that. But that's like most coins that are out there. But at the moment, the FUD sentiment appears to have capped Solana's price. I have a, a prediction that is somewhat opposite of that. And there's a reason for that. And I'll get into that in a minute. The price pattern of what the symmetrical triangle and pre preceding downtrend is the pattern would favor a Solana price prediction of a breakdown in the triangle targeting around 24 bucks initially or 21.89. So basically they're using a Fibonacci uh, retracement here to get to it. You can kind of see what they've done here with being able to take this price triangle down, especially right after we saw a little bit of a high right here and where this is going. So their position is that Solana is probably gonna have a price downturn before we see a price upturn. Now, now that we know, yes, the technology is sound. Yes, there are some challenges. FUD is in the water. But where are we standing in terms of sentiment and layering in that? I want to jump over to trade the chain. Let's jump over here real quick to trade the chain and do a quick just review of where these are going. Let's jump down here to Solana. And there she is right there. Let's zoom in on that. As you can kind of see, Solana coming in on uh, daily sentiment plus 10.54, neutral on the current and very bullish on the long term. So this to me tells me that there is some derivatives out there in terms of positions of where this might be. 
The problem I see is the volatility on the social media, which is causing that FUD to occur. And you're seeing a 12.94 and then a 52.09 right there when it comes to the relative trading volume on Solana. I want to jump to the indicator here real quick. Let's uh, scan across real quick. And we'll go over here and jump to the sentiment here on Trade the Chain. So Trade the Chain, let's take a look a little bit here. It's a little bit slow, but you can kind of see it developing. Let's go to the seven day, zoom in on this just a hair so you guys can see that a little bit better. You'll notice that the price action is starting to pick up even though we're getting the negative sentiment layer right here. And the traction starts to occur right here which of course is today. And this is where we see this climb. Now, the question that everybody is asking, because if you think about where this has come from, right here at the time of recording, holding in at 34. And if you look at that $35 price point in the last week, so this is May 26th, this is an interesting position for Solana. Now I want to jump over to the trading view and let's take a look at our analysis on this and what this means. This one is very interesting. So the, I've added in a new layer here of amplification. And amplification is the yellow line that we're using. And we retraced amplification back across the past few days. And this went all the way back to May 25th, right here, when we were at this little dip right here, you can see on screen. And as you can see, the amplification almost stays perfectly in line with the exception of this dip right here. We lose uh, traceability right here. It picks up, strengths a little, strengths a little, strengthens a little bit, stays with the rise and a small dip right here, and then a big bump right here, which didn't see the full bump, a nice little dip underneath here, and then here's where we are. Now, here's the difference. Sentiment at 46.23 in this range right here, which was on May 29th, ranging out to May 31st. Then another sentiment score right here on May 31st, all the way into uh, June 1st, which was basically this morning, tracking in. And now we're on the live sentiment, which is 60.08, which is up from the 50 points that you see right there in the opportunity. Here's the amplification trajectory on Solana. So as you can kind of see, as we start to move out, June 4th, here let's go out to June 4th and on into June 5th. And right here by June 6th or so, we see a price point at around $48. This would be a pretty significant move if the amplification holds. If we look at the historical amplification line that we're following, Along with the sentiment climb right here, Solana looks like it is pulling out of the basement and could be in a very good position in terms of price correction. So as you look at these kind of scenarios and whether you're looking at sentiment data, amplification, remember amplification is more of a leading indicator as opposed to a, a following indicator. And it helps you look at, especially if you go back in time and try to layer it in on top of the existing track that a particular coin or token takes, if it can hold, and some of them match, some of them do not. We've had some on Bitcoin with amplification that just are absolutely off. And then we've had Ethereum amplification comparisons that have held fair, fairly significant. It has a lot to do with the FUD and the social media sentiment that amplifies what's happening on that particular investment. And it's so odd because if you think about this, this happens a lot in the stock industry. I mean, right now we're experiencing this, experiencing this right now with AMC is that we're seeing amplification occur because of what's happening with AMC making a few small moves. And it's like they always say, buy the rumor, sell the news. That's the application I think I'm going to be applying uh, on Solana and hopefully gonna do a little bit of acquisition here before we get moving forward. Remember, this is not investment advice. If you guys are out there looking at uh, this podcast or this video over on YouTube, make sure and do your own research. Do like what I just did, showing you two different news items that were showing varying opinions and position them against each other. Find the one that you're most convicted and believe in 
and then make your move because the key here right now, especially in a down market, if we are not in the bear market, this is could potentially be either one, the basement, or in a slight lull over the summer before we see another dip, which is just another buying opportunity and you can DCA all the way down or you can DCA up and, and get your dollar cost averages moving. And hopefully if you're doing day trading, you're, maybe you're making a few dollars because maybe today in the last, you know, let's say two days, you just went from 26 bucks to uh, $35 if you were in Solana. So that's a nice move for those of you who are in that position. If you're listening in over at the podcast, make sure and subscribe. It's the number one way you help those, those podcasts out, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, Google, Amazon, any of those, just subscribe and also give us a rating. Let us know if you like the content over there. That's a great way for us to get input from you. If you're here on YouTube, man, you've got to subscribe. We're trying to make it to 100,000 subs. We need your help. Spread the news, spread the word, get it out there. Tech Path is the way. And if you have an idea for a show, just shoot us that idea to producer at reverendnetworks.com. You can always hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on Tech Path.